name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of his divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman who you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? And the woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly you shall crawl, and dirt you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called to his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise and glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one, who accomplishes all things according to the intent of his will, so that we may exist for the praise of his glory, who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I know not man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. This afternoon, we gather as the family of God to praise and to thank God for the gift of the mother, the Mother Mary, our Mother, the Mother of God. I also like to welcome in a special way through live stream all our school children who are watching this Mass via live stream in school. Since they can't be with us here in person, know of our prayers for you and a very special day for you as we reflect on God's great gift, God's precious gift, the gift of Mary. And so special was Mary that from the very moment of her conception, God kept her safe from the original sin and all the effects of that sin. Now we know ourselves, when we have something very precious, something very, very unique, something that's worth great value, we always try to protect it and keep it in a container that's immaculate and clean, that nothing else really has and we clothe it, and we close it, and we watch it, we may even lock it up. So special it is that the container that holds that has to be holy as well. And that's precisely, boys and girls, what this feast is about today. Our Blessed Lady, so precious, holding on to the gift of Jesus, her Son, that she herself had to be pure, had to be perfect, and so God gave her the very special and very unique grace of being without original sin because no sin could mingle with the beauty of God. And God so loved Mary that he gave her a unique name, full of grace. Something that is full means nothing more can be added to it. It has reached its limit. And to be full of grace means that you are so uniquely in love with God and God with you that no more can be added to the beauty that you have, that beauty of Mary. And so today, we celebrate that beauty. We celebrate that feast of the Mother of God being so precious and unique that God gave her this special grace to hold on to and to give birth to Jesus, who we celebrate in a few days at Christmas. And so it's fitting for us to gather today to praise and thank God for the gift of our Blessed Lady, the Lady of the Immaculate Conception, who revealed herself to a little girl of the age 12 or 14 in France in 1858. And four years prior to that, our Holy Father declared it a dogma of the Church that all of us must believe. But that didn't come out of anywhere. That was a long, loving tradition. 
In fact, yesterday's feast, St. Ambrose, he wrote about Mary's virginal conception way back in the fourth century. And so it's always been a belief of the Catholic people that Mary was a unique person in the plan of salvation. So much in 1846, the bishops of our own country dedicated us and our country under the patronage of, of the Immaculate Conception. So today's a very special day for our country as well, as we ask our Blessed Lady to watch over her family, us, and to give us that peace that we long for, to bring peace to our country, to bring peace and faith and the renewal of human life, that special unique gift that we celebrate at the moment of Mary's conception. And so today, we thank God for the gift of Mary. She was the dawn of our human salvation. And we thank God that she said yes. She said yes when the angel asked her. And her whole life was a life of fulfilling God's will. And that's our task as well. To the best of our ability, despite our sinfulness, despite our weaknesses, that we too say yes to God. May God's will be done in our life as well. And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And so we humbly place all our prayers and petitions before our compassionate God. For the Church of Christ, that we may keep Mary, our mother, ever in thought, action, and prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, that they come to know the peace of Christ through the intercession of Mary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer persecution, that Christ in his mercy free them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, and let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Augie, Mary, and Raphael Ascara, May they rest in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, you blessed Mary with the fullness of grace. Help us to find your grace in our lives as we ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
will pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Graciously accept the love, the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace, to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb, who would wipe away our offenses. You placed her above all others, to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of the angels, we praise you, and with our joy, we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and so entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our beloved patroness, St. Margaret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. of God, Old, who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those who cannot now receive Holy Communion, those who are watching the live stream, we pray now the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacraments we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault, from which, in a singular way, you preserved Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessings. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. And may you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. And now may the blessings of our gracious God descend upon you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.